Well, I mean, all the rain that we've had this latter part of the summer, I mean, we're still, you know, we're a couple of weeks into October, we're mowing lawns, everything is green. It's just not the typical Oklahoma fall going into winter, but it's gonna change. You know, we'll get some freezing weather and this green grass will go dormant and then dormant fuels burn very well. And so it's something that we need to be thinking about. It's something that really should be on our minds year round about what can we do to protect our, our valuables, our families, our homes, and our properties in the event of a fire. Let's talk about this place here. This is typical of what we would, would see around Oklahoma. What kind of things do you observe when you, when you look around this area? You know, around this house, again, they've, they've, they've kept the lawn mowed short. You know, you know, part of it is there's, there's some different, what we call ignition zones, zones that you have greatest concern about. And the first zone is that, first ignition zone is about that first 30 feet around your house. That's a big part of it is looking at that close proximity, because that's where most fires start is in that close proximity. So again, we want to keep fuels down. We want to keep trees trimmed up. We want to plant shrubbery and stuff that's not flammable or not as flammable. We need to think about like mulches that we use in our in the gardens and stuff that we have around our flower beds and stuff around our homes to make sure that it's non-flammable or we keep it moist and in really dry conditions and stuff so it's just not flammable. And just little things that we don't think about about like on a deck here that you make sure that you cover up the edges of it so so stuff can't, can't blow and collect underneath and cause it to be flammable. Also, embers doesn't get underneath there. So again, they've got this deck all covered up so there's nothing can blow under it, nothing can grow under it. Embers aren't going to blow into it. And also, if you look at it close enough, it's made out of non-flammable building materials. And that's another good thing that we can think about. But again, deck doesn't have to be that. It can be made out of wood, but we just want to think about covering things up. What other things should we look at around here? Well, there's some other things that we can look at. So again, you know, here within this house, they've got trees planted back away from the house, so they're not growing up into the eaves, so they could, could possibly ladder a fire up in there. But also you have to take into consideration what kind of trees they are. Again, oak tree back there, you know, it has leaves on it. Right now you may think it's flammable, but it's, it's pruned up. The grass is mowed short. Fire should never even get up in that. And plus, during the winter months, whenever we're, we're more flammable, those leaves are gone. Now, the next thing to worry about is where those leaves gonna accumulate. You know, so then that's a thing we may have to worry about, raking leaves, moving leaves out of guttering, where they accumulate next to the home or something like that, where they could cause a problem. That's where we need to work with that. Propane yeah. tanks are another thing. Again, we, we wanna make sure we keep them the proper distance from the, from the home. Also, we want to make sure we keep all the grass, everything down around it. A lot of times it's good to either use herbicide to remove vegetation from around it, put it on a gravel pad, something that's non-flammable, just so it doesn't heat up. But the main thing is, is getting it the proper distance away from the house. There's lots to see and talk about, of course. It's, it's kind of limitless. Um, but you and your team, as we, as we continue walking and talking, um, and, and colleagues from, from other states have put together a pretty comprehensive guide in the, in the last few months? Yes, we have. We got it out this summer, you know, about preparing your ranch and your farm for a uh, wildfire, because that's something we've got to do. And we not only try to look at your house, but also outbuildings, hay storage, um, having a plan for evacuation of livestock, if that's care. Because again, we, in the last several years, we've had some incidents where people have been severely injured and even killed trying to evacuate livestock. And again, we need to think about what is the proper way to do that? When is the proper time to do it? When's the proper time just to walk away? Because again, it's not worth your life. There's not enough firefighters in this state to come help and set at everybody's house and to do all that kind of stuff. So you've got to try to make sure that your house kind of is able to stand alone. That if, Because again, the other thing is, is that fire going to occur when you're at home? We don't know. And so you need to think about if I'm not here, can this house, or this house, this barn, this equipment storage area, can it survive without me? And that's what we should strive to, strive to do. Well, we're glad we're talking about it today and we want to share the guide with our viewers. So yeah. thank you very much for this information today, John. And for a link to the guide, we have it on our website, sunup.okstate.edu.